The law of conservation of mass states that mass is never created or destroyed. So that means that the number of atoms of the reactants before a reaction must be equal to the number of atoms of the products after a reaction. So they've got the same mass of the reactants to the products. I'm going to do three experiments now to demonstrate the law of conservation of mass. So we've got hydrochloric acid. Now I'm actually going to just be measuring a change in mass so I'm not concerned about exact measurements. That's not necessary in this experiment. Hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So the mass we have as our starting mass is 288.66 grams. So 288.65 grams. So now we're going to mix them. We're going to cause a chemical reaction between the acid and the base. So this first experiment is not very exciting. You don't see much happening. Let's have a look at the mass. The final mass 288.65 so we have now got a new product here our product we started with hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide now we have water and sodium chloride so we've got new products but the mass is the same okay in this next experiment, we're going to use hydrochloric acid again. And this time, instead of using a base, we're going to use a carbonate, sodium carbonate. Again, I don't need to be exact with the measurement because we're just measuring the difference in mass. So this is sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Okay, so let's get our starting mass. As you can see, our starting mass is 155.59 grams. And let's do the reaction. Now, with a weighing boat, if you bend the corners like this, it actually makes a funnel. And as you can see, this experiment, this reaction is a bit more interesting. Something's happening this time we're seeing a fizz created. And what does fizz mean when you see a reaction? What is fizz? So we can see that fizz means that bubbles are being produced and those bubbles are gas. So let's have a look at the mass now. 154.75. So we've actually had a reduction in mass. So the mass has actually decreased. Why has it decreased? Well, that gas is carbon dioxide. So it's atoms of carbon and atoms of oxygen. And they have gone up into the atmosphere. This is what we call an open system. We haven't tried to have a closed system where the gas is trapped. The gas was allowed to escape so the mass has decreased. So does that mean that this breaks the law of conservation of mass? No, because we can explain where that mass has gone. Yes, it's decreased, but we know where it's gone to. It's gone into gas. I'm gonna show you one more experiment. This time we're going to use iron wool. We're gonna get the mass of it to start off with, but first of all, I'm gonna put it on this tray. And let's see what that mass is. 3.95 grams. What we're going to do is actually burn this iron wool. We're going to burn it because we are going to produce iron oxide. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually turning a blue color. So the iron is actually changing colour to a blue colour. Okay, while we're doing this, I want you to make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen to the mass? So we're burning it. 
This is called a combustion reaction. What is happening when we burn it? What's going to happen to the mass? So we now have a mass of 3 point, oh, it's actually gone up to 4.01 grams. So the mass has increased. What on earth is going on there? How has the mass increased? So I mentioned this blue colour. This blue colour is now called uh, iron oxide. So what's happened is that oxygen has bound to the iron. And that's what the new product is. Where did this oxygen come from? Well, it came from the air around us. Oxygen atoms have come out of the air and bound to the iron. That's why the mass has increased. Again, it complies with the law of conservation of mass because we can explain why there's an increase in mass. We know where that mass has come from. And it's come from oxygen from all around us.